Jerry, do you want to ring the bell? Does somebody want to ring the bell? Give me a beep if you can hear me. All right, excellent. Uh, those of you who are worshiping with us outdoors, outdoors, if you want to, you may rise if you'd like. Otherwise, whatever you feel free to do. So we praise you, God, for water. We praise you, God, for water. We need water to drink. We need water to drink. We need water to wash. We need water to wash. We need water to grow. We praise you, God, for water. We praise you, God, for water. We praise you, God, for baptism. We praise you, God, for baptism. We praise you, God, for your Holy Spirit. We praise you, God, for your Holy Spirit. We praise you, God, for water. <coughs> Praise you, God, for water. Amen with water. Amen with water. Uh, we'll skip this last part, and we will just go ahead and sing the gathering song as you are seated. we prepare and equip our neighbors and ourselves to respond to the Holy Spirit's call wherever that call leads. We know that we're doing our mission. We witness faith, joy, and grace from our work. Um, most of what I know is sitting inside the announcements before I get to those though. Um, this is our normal uh, Sunday to worship outdoors on the schedule, uh, but it's also a fortunate one. Um, I have a pretty uh, significant COVID uh, situation in my household uh, right now, lots of fevers, and it's uh, 
uh, yeah, it's a challenge. Uh, everybody's quarantined. I have, I am testing negative, uh, but I have a cold, um, and I apologize if I've been a little grumpy the last couple of days. Uh, I get, I can become a big baby when I get sick, so I apologize for that. Um, so I'm testing negative, but for the safety and all, um, yeah, I am uh, keeping the distance. So if uh, I think Claudia Hansen is our reader today, so if you're our reader. Um, I'd like you to come inside and use Bill Emmons' microphone, uh, otherwise just so we can all be safe and, uh, yeah, be careful. Um, again, I'm testing negative and I'm feeling better and better, so uh, on Wednesday for the Bible study, that's a plan that is still going to happen, um, and we'll be on our second week of our exploration of Jonah, which is uh, pretty exciting. Note the event on the 12th. Uh, there will be no council or all committee meeting in July. If your team, your work group, your ministry wants to meet in July, please go ahead and do that. But there will be no all committee and no council this month. Um, a couple other things. Um, I've been asked to remind you folks that the Altar Guild will be meeting at 9 a.m. Wednesday, the 26th in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, D. Sachin, who was our ministry leader, will be resigning uh, from that post due to illness. And as our fine minister Rose told us last week, uh, they could, we could really use some support and help with that ministry. Uh, I was so inspired by what she said that I've been asking uh, some of our, our, our young adults to get involved and things like that. But if you're interested, if you want to know more, if you want to know what it is to set up communion and uh, decorate our worship spaces, not decorate, but uh, vest them in the colors and uh, basically support the support our spiritual life and our worship experience please uh, consider attending that meeting and learning more and if you can't please get a ro uh, hold of Rose or anybody any member of the altar guild uh, to, uh, to talk about how you can get involved um, I also want to make a note uh, and I'll just read this I'm not texting I'm not checking my text messages I promise um, so uh, we just heard uh, from Apple Grove Lutheran uh, which is one of our one of our fellow congregations uh, near Argyle Wisconsin they were devastated in last night's storms uh, their building took severe devastating damage uh, the pastor Dan Bullman and the congregation of Apple Grove as well as the surrounding community of Argyle uh, and all those affected by severe weather, we should add them to our prayers when we have our moments of silence. Uh, our bishop and our synod is involved and, and, uh, and supporting that group. Um, and just, just a reminder for those of us, any of us, anybody in the world affected by severe weather. Um, otherwise, that's mostly what I know. I encourage you again to look through the announcements. Um, and then I just want us to remember that we, the church this week, remembers a number of saints who have gone to live in peace with Jesus. This week, the church remembers John the Baptist, Philip Melanchthon, Cyril, who was the Bishop of Alexandria, Irenaeus, who was the Bishop of Lyon, and Peter and Paul, the apostles, uh, not, the, not the members of the same group. Uh, John uh, said, Jesus must increase, but I must decrease. So his birth is celebrated a half year before Jesus's, just as the daylight in the northern hemisphere begins to wane. Uh, Jesus honored John as being the greatest prophet. Uh, Philip Melanchthon, although he died on April 19th, uh, we commemorate, his, commemorate him this week because of his connection with the Augsburg Confession. The Augsburg Confession is one of those core books in Lutheran tradition that we uh, claim our, our true interpretations of the scriptures. The Augsburg Confession was written by Philip Melanchthon and endorsed by Martin Luther. It consists of a brief summary of points in which the reformers saw their teaching as either agreeing with or differing from that of the Roman Catholic Church of the time. Colleague and co-reformer with Martin Luther, Melanchthon was a brilliant scholar known as the teacher of Germany. Uh, Cyril defended the orthodox teachings about the person of Christ after a conflict involving all the major Christian leaders of the time it was decided that Cyril's interpretation that Christ's person included both divine and human natures was correct. That's a thing that we sort of take for granted today, but that was a real uh, debate back then. Uh, this important early church leader tried very hard to hold the faith handed down by the apostles, an opponent of the movement known as Gnosticism, 
Uh, Irenaeus was one of the first to speak of the church as Catholic or universal or linked together. And finally, uh, Peter and Paul were two strong little apostles of the, uh, and the pillars of the church in the first generation after Christ. Peter was one of the twelve who was, who was both offered a glorious confession of faith and later denied knowing Christ. Paul once led the persecution of Christians uh, and then was converted and helped bring the faith to non-Jewish people. So we will remember them in our prayers today. And uh, let's go ahead and sing our Kyrie and our Gloria. eternal majesty, you preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength, pilot us. By your power, preserve us. By your wisdom, instruct us. And by your hand, protect us. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So while teaching about forgiveness and sin, Jesus said this, wherever two or three of you come together in my name, I am there with you. So let's take a moment to greet those of uh, greet each other, either through the car window, if you want to brave the rain and you're not going to melt, uh, you can get out and wave to folks. I will come around and also wave to you folks, but again, I encourage you not to get too close to me. So God's peace be with you.
not the worst, but you'll be damp on the way home. Yeah, thanks for noticing. our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ fulfilling the promise of the resurrection you pour out the fire of your spirit uniting in one body people of every nation and every language and so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection with earth and sea and all their creatures with the angels and archangels cherubim and seraphim we praise your name and join their unending hymn. your praise beyond the stars beneath the sea within each cell with every breath we praise you God we bless you God we thank you God so in the night in which he was betrayed our Lord Jesus took some bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said this he said take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me and then again, after supper, he once again took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for everyone to drink. And he said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Please do this for the remembrance of me. If you're outdoors, you're welcome to rise if you'd like as we pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. So Lord, please remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, our Lord, our Lord, our Lord. Stay our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. us at the table with more than enough for everyone uh, please join us in this meal this is the Lord's meal and not ours uh, we will be using fellowship cups today so you will peel the uh, top off to get to the wafer and then the second layer will get you the juice or the I think this is juice will get you to the juice um, if no one tells you this day truly know this this is truly the body and blood of Christ given for you if for some reason you don't have this and you want this um, please honk your horn and we will uh, get it out to you. And it looks like Minister Sheila is going to be reading for us today. So go ahead.
is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band? and prescribed bounds for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. The second reading is from Second Corinthians. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. <coughs> See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the, weapon, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as the children. Open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. hear a story about Jesus. This story is from Mark. Glory to you, Lord. So when evening came, Jesus said to the disciples, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped with water. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And Jesus woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. And he said to them, well, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe, and they said to one another, who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? It's the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Christ. 
Uh, my prayer is that the Holy Spirit uses me so that you who are worshiping with us in your vehicles or out in the lawn in the, in the sprinkling rain, uh, or if you're indoors and helping with worship or even worshiping inside the building, or if you're with us with time and space through time and space online and worshiping us with us there, that you hear the Lord's promise for you today. I also pray that God uses God's words with me and not my words. My words are insufficient, but God's are everything. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge and with no wisdom or agency? But you, gird up your loins like a warrior and a, and a person with all the agency. I will question you and you will testify, said our God to Job. See, my friends, we, didn't, we missed a lot in this story from Job this morning. But it's gotten to the point where Job wanted a trial. Job wanted a chance to plead his case to God before God. And because what, he was sure that once God heard him, God would fix all of it. And so God grants him his trial, but it's a little different. All of a sudden, God is the prosecutor and the, and the judge and not Job. Job wants God to answer to him, but, Job is de but God is demanding that Job answer to God. And God opens with this. Who is this? As in, who are you that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? You have no wisdom. You have no power. So you, you need to tighten up your belt, pull up your pants like a warrior, and uh, because certainly you have agency and power, you will do it. Because I will question you and you will testify. Right there alone, Job has already lost his case. He cannot win. He cannot get what he wants. God has said that Job is both unwise, but also is warrior enough to testify before God. He can't win. He's both and. But this isn't the end of it. These, these verses that we get this morning are really just the beginning. No, there are four chapters, four more chapters of God simply dunking on Job. And not just on Job. No, but these are four chapters of God dunking on you and on me too. After all, none of us were there when the basement of this world was poured and the sea filled it and the roof of the world was tiled with singing stars. At least I wasn't. You may recall that Job had a really good life. He was blessed. He was wealthy. He had a loving family. He had everything. And then he lost his wealth. He lost his children and his health. He was afflicted with physical agony. And maybe to make it worse, his friends then came by and instead of comforting him or telling him, hey, I'm here with you no matter what's going on, they instead insisted that he must have been at fault somehow. Even his wife suggested that he simply curse God and die. And yeah, it was simply just wrong what happened to him. He didn't do anything. It was simply unjust. Job would think things are even more unjust if he knew that all of his misery was happening because of a, a bet, a wager between God and that adversary Satan. And you're like, why me? What did I do? And so, but Job doesn't know that. Instead, Job asks a question that I think a lot of us relate to and questions our God. And he asks, where were you when all this bad stuff was happening to me? There's a Presbyterian pastor named Reverend Leanne Pierce Reed. Uh, she has some great insight into Job and into us. And I'm going to share a bit of what she has to say on this. That question, that Job's question, emerges from a particular way of understanding the world that we live in. It's a theory that was shared by ancient Israel and many of the surrounding cultures around God's people, and one that probably still sounds familiar to us today. According to this understanding, those who live a good life and are obedient to God's commands will be rewarded with good fortune health, wealth, and other blessings. 
those who sin and disobey God's commandments will meet misfortune, that is, illness and poverty and other woes. Now, this is really legalistic. This is really law-like, not gospel. So this legalist moral framework focused on right and wrong was considered the very essence of justice. People get what they deserve. They reap what they sow. When tragedy strikes, as they inevitably do, consolation is found in the belief that the outcome is actually just, that victims must deserve the punishment in some way. Job had lived and breathed that moral framework of his culture, this particular understanding of the world, his entire life. Then his own tragedy strikes. Chaos comes knocking at his door. Thanks to a heavenly deal between God and Satan, Job loses everything. His flocks are stolen, his servants are murdered, his children are killed, his health is ruined, and yet Job is innocent. As Job sits among the ashes with nothing but a pot a pot's herd to scratch his skin, a, sorry, a pot shard to scratch his skin, all the evidence suggests that Job's understanding of the world is actually inadequate. Job, no, Job knows that he has not sinned or disobeyed God, and still he suffers. The thing about it is, is that Job cannot see beyond his very narrow worldview. Look, today, if I drive safely home after worship, and then I, for some reason, well then shouldn't I expect to get home safely? After all, I did it right. If you fill a bed of rich soil with seeds from beautiful flowers, ensure that there's not too little water or too much water, that that bed has the right amount of sun and shade, and the right amount of weeding is done, then you expect to get some flowers. If someone puts in an honest effort and accomplishes the work they are called to do, then they expect to be paid fairly. If you live in peace and follow the rules, then you expect to be left in peace and safety. So what happens when someone does the right thing but does not get home safely, does not get some flowers, does not get paid fairly, or does not get safety and peace? Now we have now then we have all the platitudes and cliches that may roll out, right? We may say things like well, God does not give us more than we can handle, or that's just too bad, or how unlucky, or it's just a mystery, or we cannot know God's plan, or maybe something must have happened, or what did you do, or God is in control, or something else useless and, dare I say, stupid. <clears throat> My friends, those are the kinds of things that Job's friends said to him. And God, well, when God shows up, God isn't much more help. Job wants an answer, and God does not give one. You know, I'm thinking about this, and I have some other examples, and I'll share them. I mean, it's thinking about our friends, our, our, our sibling Lutherans, ELCA Lutherans at April Grove Lutheran in Argyle. Are those not faithful people, but now their building has been devastated? What did they do? Or I'm thinking about our trip to New Orleans coming up that, that our young adults are taking, and, uh, and there's lots of, um, I don't know, controversy about what's going on in Louisiana these days. I hate to hear about it from my daughter every day. Um, and, uh, and yet I remember Hurricane Katrina I remember people putting up signs or saying something like that God was punishing that city for, I don't know, being lame in some way. Well, I don't know if they're any more lame than any of us or any of our communities, but folks were had to believe, some folks had to believe that they were being punished. Personally, I remember when I announced uh, my wife Aubrey's death on Facebook. I explained in my post that she had a seizure which was not unusual for her because she had epilepsy. What was dangerous is that she also had COVID at the time. And the thing about it is that we didn't know she had COVID. So when she had a seizure, COVID made it so that she could not breathe. And then she left us. And I explained all of that in my post. And the comments on that Facebook post were fine, but one really stuck out with me. This is what I get for reading comments on Facebook. One commenter asked, well, was she vaccinated? 
Let me translate. She could have meant one of two things. One, uh, why did she expose herself to COVID if it was dangerous for her? She should have stayed safe. Well, I don't think she knew she was exposing herself to COVID. She was on her uh, bachelorette party. So, yeah. Or, the other way to look at it is, is if she was vaccinated, then why didn't the vaccine work, right? Vaccines should always work. It's really interesting in my household. I don't, I'm pretty sure I don't have COVID. I don't feel good, but I have a cold, but I'm vaccinated. The person in my household is vaccinated, but it bounced off of me, but got to them. I don't know. See? You know, here's what I know. What I at least guess. I guess that you have some hurts, some things that have challenged you in your life that have hurt you. There are times where you did everything right, and yet it all went wrong. Because you're like Job. Like Job, you may really want an answer as to why those bad things happened to you. Or maybe you've given up on finding an answer and, and just, I don't know, passively accepted this world sometimes sucks or often sucks or mostly sucks. Maybe you have even cursed God and are simply waiting to die. I don't know, but I know you have hurts. And where, where is God while you are hurting? Look, every week here at worship we pray and plead uh, as a community that our God shields us from that kind of stuff. We even did that this morning. Yet, stuff sometimes happens. And I at least have no good answer as to why. Yeah. This world just has chaos in it. Sometimes that chaos is caused by our God and we can chuckle about it as in Pentecost or celebrate it. And sometimes we're just not sure. I remember a time when my heart was really broken. And I cannot say if I called it despair, that does not describe the bottomless pit of my hurt. It just was a never-ending oblivion. And at the time, I was a chaplain at Meritor Hospital in Madison, and so I was supposed to go and bring God to people, calling to God for answers when I needed an answer. And even if I wasn't supposed to bring God in those moments, then at least bring some company and comfort and be there for, person, for people, just be with them. But yet, I was bleeding as much as you can bleed. So what did I do? I called one of my pastors, Pastor Nick. When I called him, I wanted answers. I think I asked why in various ways so many times. The thing about Pastor Nick is that that day he didn't give me any answers. He could not, would not tell me why I had to hurt like I was hurting. But what he did instead, instead of prophesying to me, prophesying to me that way, he instead he preached to me. He said a word for me from the outside, and that word was this. That word from the outside from our God was this: that God is hurting with you, Sterling. God hurts when you hurt. God is with you right now, crying just like you are crying. Friends, church, I have a word for you from the outside, for all of you. And, it, and it's not from me, but it's from our Lord God. It's from Jesus through the Holy Spirit. And that word is this. When you hurt, your God hurts. When you cry, your God cries. When you laugh, your God laughs. When you call to your God, you know your, call, your God is calling to you. Where is your God? Well, right here, right now. Jesus has claimed you as his. That is a promise. Not an answer, but a promise. Amen. Let's go ahead and sing our song of the day. Uh, my life flows on an endless song.
outside with me if you'd like. You can rise as we confess our shared faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You can be seated. Remember, resurrected Lord, this congregation present and those who are absent. Have mercy upon them and upon us according to the greatness of your love and grace. Fill their homes and shelters with good things. Preserve their relationships in peace and love. Take care of their little ones. Lead their youth. Give strength to the aged. Comfort the timid and afraid. Bring home the scattered. Restore those who, who have made mistakes or have sinned against you or hurt others. And unite them all in your holy church. God of love. Heal those who are burdened with illness of body or mind, unclean spirits, loneliness, depression, worry, or grief. Protect all who have lost a spouse or partner. Shelter the orphans, protect the immigrants and aliens, deliver those who are imprisoned or kept from home. God of love. God of love. Remember, resurrected Lord, all who stand in need. We ask you to care for those who have hurt us in the past and those with blessings to celebrate. We especially pray for Apple Grove Lutheran, all the people there, their leaders, their ministers, their pastor, and anyone or anything else that we name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. God of love. Resurrected Lord, all your people, and pour out upon them in abundance your goodness, especially those who grieve the death of loved ones, whether from disease or other causes. Remember, resurrected Lord, all those people and things we have not remembered through ignorance or forgetfulness, because there are so many who need you. Thank you for the people who called to faith before you called us to faith, including John the Baptist, Philip Melanchthon, the teacher of Germany, Cyril, Bishop of Alexandria. Irenaeus, Bishop of Leones, and both the Apostles Peter and Paul. God of love. For you, resurrected Lord, are the helper of the helpless, the hope of the hopeless, the savior of the tempest tossed, the harbor of the voyager, and the physician of sick. Be all things to all people. Show yourselves to all people. Show yourself to all people. For you know them all, their position, your petitions, their dwellings, and their minds. Please hear our prayers. And all God's people say, Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Let's go ahead and sing our final hymn. We'll sing verses 1, 3, and 4 of Be Thou My Vision.
Please go in peace. Remember, you are the body of Christ. Thank you, God.